It was an announcement that seemed to come out of the blue. At a hastily arranged press conference at her official residence this morning, Nicola Sturgeon revealed she would be standing down as Scotland's first minister and as soon as a replacement could be found. Ms Sturgeon denied being swayed by what she called short-term pressures, such as the recent row over gender reforms. And despite her failure to secure a second referendum, she insisted the independence campaign will succeed. But speaking about the brutality of politics, she said a new leader is needed for the causes she holds dear. From Edinburgh, our political correspondent Carl Dinner now on Sturgeon's shock announcement. Scotland's first female first minister, one of its best political communicators, one of its most polarising politicians. Good morning, everyone. Today, Nicola Sturgeon said part of serving well is knowing when to go. In my head... And in my heart, I know that time is now, that it is right for me, for my party and for the country. And so today I am announcing my intention to step down as First Minister and leader of my party. The last few weeks have been bruising for Nicola Sturgeon. A row over gender self-declaration turned nasty when rapist Isla Bryson was temporarily sent to a women's prison. But... This decision is not a reaction to short-term pressures. Of course, there are difficult issues confronting the government just now, but when is that ever not the case? She said the deeper issue was that she no longer had the energy, perhaps even the appetite, for the job. I'm not expecting violins here, but I am a human being as well as a politician. A First Minister is never off duty, particularly in this day and age there is virtually no privacy. Even ordinary stuff that most people take for granted, like going for a coffee with friends or for a walk in your own, becomes very difficult. In particular, her leadership through the pandemic had exacted a price. By no stretch of the imagination was my job the hardest in the country during that time. But the weight of responsibility was immense. And it's only very recently, I think, that I've started to comprehend let alone process the physical and mental impact of it on me. But the political outlook is challenging. The SNP has a big decision to make about how to argue for another independence referendum. And Sturgeon says she's not too divisive a figure to make that case. And my judgment now is that a new leader will be better able to do this. Someone about whom the mind of almost everyone in the country is not already made up for better or worse. Too often I see issues presented and, as a result, viewed not on their own merits, but through the prism of what I think and what people think about me. Although her political opponents tried to sound magnanimous today, they didn't all manage it. Well, let me first start by paying tribute to Nicola Sturgeon for her long-standing public service. And I wish her well in the future. Now, obviously, Nicola and I didn't agree on everything. Look, despite my many disagreements uh, with Nicola Sturgeon, despite my many arguments, uh, I think that uh, record in that time of service is worthy of respect and worthy of thanks. On a, a personal level, we, we never really got on uh, particularly well, uh, and I'm not going to uh, ignore that at the time when I think there have been issues that she could have and should have focused on. She was worried that too much reflection might lead to tears today, but as ever, she kept it together. To all of the people of Scotland, whether you voted for me or not, please know that being your First Minister has been the privilege of my life. Nothing, absolutely nothing I do in future will ever come anywhere close. On one level, eight years in office looks like political success. But as Nicola Sturgeon waved from the upstairs window of Butte House today, the dream of Scottish independence looked no closer than when she first arrived. And Carl's outside Holyrood now. Carl, Nicola Sturgeon spoke, didn't she, about the brutality of politics, but she said recent events hadn't forced her resignation. So why do you think she chose now? Well, Mary, I don't think we can discount the cumulative effect of eight years in office, uh, giving 100%, as Nicola Sturgeon put it, leading a country uh, and, and facing uh, the sort of brutality and, and the polarised political atmosphere that she says uh, she has endured. However, I think we can't either completely discount 
the row over the Gender Recognition Act because although she termed it a short-term pressure, it has had effects which may be longer lasting. It has damaged her popularity, the standing of her party, and it has even apparently damaged support for Scottish independence. Uh, and when you put all that together with the uh, conference that the SNP is coming up, where they have to decide their next steps. I mean, Nicola Sturgeon says she wants the next general election to be a de facto referendum on independence. Not everyone thinks that's the right way to move forward. When you put all those things together, uh, this was a moment where the SNP faced a, a fork in the road, if you like, and I think Nicola Sturgeon recognised that. Uh, I don't think, uh, however, that anybody was expecting today's announcement, and in those terms, at least Nicola Sturgeon uh, has decided to go on her own terms. OK. Carl Dinan in Edinburgh, thank you.